also have a demand side challenge, including those who are struggling with addiction. And we don't have enough drug treatment for those individuals. We don't have enough drug recovery programs. We have important work to do to help people find a new productive future. I'll get to that in a minute. We also need to elevate our conversation around substance abuse, around mental health, and destigmatize these conversations, develop prevention, education efforts that help the next generation not find themselves going down this dark path. And we have to deal with the effects of this crisis, which are felt in our public health system, in law enforcement, in so many ways. Part of how we use harm reduction is to, for example, distribute naloxone, which I've heard from sheriffs save lives every week in jails across Colorado. And when someone goes to jail and they leave, having gone through, in effect, mandatory detox, they're 130 times more likely to overdose than the average person. We need to do better. We need to save lives. We need to help our communities. The amount of money that we are talking about today will mean over $300 million to Colorado. With the other settlements, I mentioned Purdue Pharma, the Sackler family, our lawsuit against McKinsey, we're talking in the neighborhood of $400 million. This will come to Colorado over 18 years. This is also just the beginning. Working with our local government partners, we are prepared to create what we believe can be a national model. It will involve all local governments signing a memorandum of understanding. That memorandum of understanding is critical to the money that we're talking about today flowing to Colorado. And then we will work together with a bottom-up solution where each region will have to decide what mix of priorities makes sense for them. And we're gonna work, if you will, hub and spoke to help support all of these regions with needed infrastructure, support for efforts like workforce training because we don't have enough behavioral health professionals here in Colorado. The money will start as soon as within the next year, there's work to be done before that. We have to get the memorandum of understanding signed with our low carbon partners. We're gonna have to work on developing the regional governance and plans for the regions. And we're in this work because there's a lot to do. And when I ran to become attorney general, this was an issue that I put incredible emphasis on. And I'm so proud of our team led by Leslie Eaton, our first assistant attorney general, John Feeney Coyle, both of whom will work tirelessly on this, Megan Runlet, and more to bring us to this day. Heidi Williams has come on as our director of opioid response so that she can work with our local government partners to develop the regional collaborative solutions we need. The companies have a lot to account for. The three distributors we're talking about today contributed, fueled this epidemic. Amerisaurus, Bergen, Cardinal, and McKesson. This is a big amount of money, $21 billion that they will be paying, given their role. Johnson & Johnson will pay $5 billion. And that will actually be front-loaded, so $3.7 billion will come early. We're working to that, get that money distributed through a preset formula throughout Colorado, as I mentioned, in this bottom-up model. We have a lot of work to do to get people on board, to build these regional collaboratives, to spend this money well. And our office is committed to transparency, developing what will be a publicly accessible database so that we know where money went, what it was spent on. Colorado has a tradition of collaborative sol problem solving, and I am proud of the way local governments working with CCI and CML have stepped up and said together, we can find a solution here. We can take advantage of this opportunity and also use parallel funds such as those available in the Rescue Act to make sure that we can do more because today in Colorado, we have about 30% of the drug treatment we need. And that means that people are suffering, many of whom are homeless, not getting the help they need. We are at a potentially transformative moment. It is our goal to use this settlement and the other ones as part of catalyzing that transformation. Be happy to get your questions and Lawrence and Emily will help moderate them. And do we have any questions for the Attorney General? Sam has a question. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, how you doing? 
Uh, so what, tell me a little bit about, it is uh, 18 annual payments, so you said some of the money will be coming, uh, is it front loaded and then it will be coming yearly for 18 years? How does it work exactly? Jim, this is a complexity. I'll try to give you the at least top line. Johnson & Johnson is going to front load their money. 3.7 billion of the 5 billion that Johnson & Johnson will pay is going to come in the first three years. Johnson & Johnson will pay the rest over a course of nine years. The distributors are going to pay 21 billion over 18 years. That money is not front loaded per se. I am comfortable with the model because I don't believe we can or should spend all the money right away. This is an ongoing problem. It took us 25 years to get into this hole. It will take us time to get out of it. We are giving notice now, and we are working with our local government partners to start developing the plans and capacities to spend this money over time. And so the fact that it's not all up front, I actually think fits with the reality of how we're gonna address this epidemic. Uh, hello? Uh, hello? Oh my gosh. Sorry about that. Um, did you say 300 million out of that is coming to Colorado? That is correct. Colorado's share of what we're announcing today will be at least 300 million. And when you talk about the earlier settlements and you put them together, we're in the neighborhood of $400 million that Colorado will have to address the opioid crisis. Thank you. And can the company walk away from the settlement? The company has committed to the settlement. We have to meet our commitment, which is to both sign on behalf of the state of Colorado and also to bring local governments to the table, signing this memorandum of understanding so that we'll address all claims and we'll have a framework together to address this epidemic. If we don't end up getting the sufficient local government support, if we are not in concurrence with them, then we are going to not have access to this funding. So after today's announcement, we are gonna start this work of making sure that we can find a path forward that is united with the state and with our local government partners. We have a question in the chat. Um, how will individuals and their families access the addiction services these settlements will provide? This process will take time. I'll take an example, Larimer County, who's already shown great facility in developing capability. They will be able to spend the funds to scale up existing services or develop new ones, which means in almost every part of Colorado, there is a compelling need for more addiction services. These funds, and I should note again, we have Rescue Act funds that can complement this effort will be able to provide more opportunities for a range of services for those struggling with addiction. It's not gonna happen immediately. We're gonna be working in each regional collaborative to build what capacity makes sense in those communities. Other questions for the Attorney General? We have another question in the chat. Does all the money go to abatement? This is a very important point. The purposes of these funds are to address the opioid crisis, full stop. It is not permissible to spend it on other valuable public services, roads, bridges, what have you. That is not allowed under the court settlement that is being filed. We will make sure, and there'll be a statewide abatement council set up to oversee the spending to ensure its compliance with that requirement. I should note, there will be efforts, education prevention ones, that are broader than just opioids. It will make sense to address substance abuse more generally, methamphetamine, for example. And so as long as opioid addiction is being addressed, funding that in the same time addresses other substance abuse issues is permissible. Dana is asking, will funds be directed to places in particular, like to communities where the original lawsuits originated in Colorado? 
The formula for funding being distributed is based on two factors, the impact of the opioid epidemic in that community and the population of that community. Whether or not there were lawsuits in any community isn't a factor for where the money's gonna go. It looks like Sam may have another question. If local governments uh, elect not to sign this memorandum of, of understanding that left out of any settlement money? That is correct. For a local government to have access to these settlement funds and to be a part of the regional collaborative solutions we're developing, they need to sign the MOU. We obviously also need a sufficient critical mass of local governments on board to get the money. We believe this is the right deal for Colorado and we'll be doing our best working with our partners in CCI and CML to make sure this is a solution that works for all of Colorado. What is that critical mass? It is not defined precisely, but it is the overwhelming majority. And if there ends up being further specification on that, we'll be in touch. But at this point, it is um, not specified. All right, uh, Shannon asked another question in the chat. Would any of the money go directly to individuals who lost loved ones or those with substance use disorders? Anyone with substance use disorder, we want to benefit from this settlement in the form of drug treatment recovery services. We know we don't have enough of it. We know there are people whose painful struggles are not being addressed. With regard to families who've lost loved ones, the unfortunate reality is we don't know that we have enough money to address all the needs for treatment or recovery for those who are struggling. And so we aren't in a position to be able to give funds back because I don't know that we're even gonna meet the needs of those who are struggling today. Any other questions for the Attorney General? Let me offer a final closing thought, unless other questions do arise. As I have spent time around our state in all four corners, I've continued to hear stories about what a challenge this epidemic has posed. How many lives and communities have been harmed? Thus, we've made this a top priority and the ability to bring this amount of money, this focus, it's a once in a generation opportunity. We need to make the most of it. We need to make sure that those lives who've been lost, those families who are hurting, know that that suffering is going to be remembered. And that as we work hard to prevent more suffering, we keep, the mind, keep in mind all of those who we lost. And for family members who suffered that loss and have dedicated their time and their effort to helping others, I applaud you and I am pained by your losses. This shouldn't have happened. It didn't happen in other countries. We're gonna do our best to stop it from happening in any form again, and we're gonna do our best to help those who are suffering. All right, thank you very much, Attorney General. This uh, will conclude the press conference. If you have any questions, feel free to follow up with um, our office. You can reach out to me, most of you know how to do that. We will be sending out a press release shortly after this press conference with all the information that was discussed during this event. So thank you very much, have a good day.